Hello everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of CSGO News. Actually one of the more exciting episodes I've had to make in a long time because today we make history in CSGO and maybe in esports as I introduce to all of you a old team, actually one of the oldest teams to ever compete in the game of esports itself and probably the oldest team ever to compete in CSGO, that is the Silver Snipers. Now I think this might be the most iconic and unique way I've ever seen a CSGO tournament organizer to promote their own events. This is actually for DreamHack 2017, a part of their advertisement for this. They're introducing the oldest CSGO team to ever compete, an average age on the team of 71. I think the oldest guy on the team is 81 years old, with the youngest member being 62 years old. And yes, it's actually composed of older, older elderly people, which I'll link them down below. You guys can check out their roster. It's actually two female members and three male members. And we're going to a little bit of depth actually talking about these guys because it might be one of the best ways I've ever seen someone promote their own event. This is, of course, will be DreamHack 2017 this upcoming weekend in Sweden. So I think as of right now, the way they're promoting this is actually you guys out there who are going to DreamHack 2017 can compete against the Silver Snipers themselves. So let's check out the lineup though. I'm sure you guys are curious what these people look like. And so of course, looking at it first of all, we have the dime piece. I mean, you'll notice when you look at these guys' stats, they're not the best players around. The highest KD on the team is only a .55, brought to you by Bear Bang. What a great nickname, known for his patience. He's actually the oldest member on the squad. But then we go to the one with the iconic nickname. That is Monica, otherwise known as the Teen Slayer. Now, I'm not sure that's the most appropriate name for a, a elderly figure to have, in the, in the, especially in an event where there will be many teenagers there. And maybe I'm taking the word Slayer out of context. As you guys can see though, we also have Birdie, one of the older members on the team. He's known for being calm, which is a great CSGO skill. Then we have the second female on the team that is Wanja, otherwise known as the Knitting Knight. Are you, you can't make this stuff up. And alongside that, finishing off, we do have Windy, uh, one of the older members as well. His specialty being vicious, but also his motto is my motto. The live, love, laugh a lot tag that I've actually used for a long time. And if you guys notice, a lot of these players have not played, you know, anywhere near 70 hours, if not any more than that. Their winning percentages are not too high, but this is the oldest team we have seen in a long time. Like, you just can't make this stuff up. I thought Omen, our HP, was doing a great job promoting their series. They had, we had the HP Omen Challenge Series. You know, players or two teams got together. They went through a bunch of challenges, either getting tased or having, you know, going mute or, you know, having flashbangs all over the screens. It was very fun to watch and very a unique idea, but Lenovo might be topping them out here with the oldest team to ever compete in CSGO. We'll see what happens. I'll link the sign up down below for all of you guys who are actually going, at, going to DreamHack 2017. You guys can sign up to play against the Silver Snipers and see if you can take them down. You'll likely be able to do so, but it's still a fun idea. On top of that though, even in bigger news for CSGO right now, we have SK Gaming dealing out the biggest slap that I've seen in a long time from them. Really kind of a big slap in the face, as you guys saw in the title, to their current member, Phelps, and they're not trying to play with them for the next major, as we have seen several times. Actually, Fox came publicly forward, the former member of Dignitas, who actually did try to qualify for the major with him. He came forward and said he was offered the role for the 2018 E-League major to play with SK Gaming in place of Phelps. Of course, he was a part of Dignitas a few weeks ago and actually about a month ago when they tried to qualify and so therefore he cannot compete with them again. I say again because the last time we had an E-League major, which is actually early 2017, so we'll have one year later another E-League major, but early 2017 the E-League major, the first one, he actually played with SK Gaming. They did quite well with him as a stand-in player, but unfortunately this time around Fox will not be able to play. I just can't imagine what kind of internal conflicts are going on right now on that team where they're clearly not wanting to play with Phelps. I know Phelps has also come forward and said he doesn't want to play for the team at the major either so we'll see what player they actually go with and uh, to fill in for the team for the big upcoming major and whether they're going to have to end up with their coach or who else is going to stand in for the team and also in big kind of shocking news this could change the future of CSGO again I want to talk about a Strauss though and device his overall illness is kind of escalating or actually has been a big cause um, of a lot of talk on, on my show lately I have uh, hopefully have more updates coming soon for all of you the latest tweet though from device apparently he is done for the remainder of the year of 2018 and Dennis will be his stand-in member so that goes for ECS and of course ESL Pro League finals as well. Uh, there'll be a stand-in player for Astralis, most likely going to be Dennis for that the rest of 2018, and Device will be back hopefully in time for the major. No really current updates for what his illness is, the, you know, the, the extent to how bad it really got, but apparently enough for him to take off much time. But also in big news, we have Refresh Entertainment, of course, the owners of that Astralis lineup. Here's the big news they've announced. Apparently throughout 2018, of course, our upcoming year of CSGO, they'll be playing anywhere from three to four events. Now, we're not sure if they're going to really stick to this saying, of course, three to four events. What do you think? Maybe two of those are going to be majors alongside that maybe ESL Pro League Finals or ECS besides that what else would they go to so we'll see if they actually stick to this 
and maybe other teams might follow suit. Now, I'm sure you guys are aware Device's illness could be tracked to how much the team was traveling, and of course, we've had a, a string of other player injuries out there, Olaf Meister, Guardian, because they've been playing so much, and of course, there's other, I'm sure there's many stories we have not heard about due to you know traveling so, such a heavy amount of time throughout the year. I'm very curious to see, will this actually cause other teams to follow suit? Other top teams who can actually afford to only go to three or four events, I think the first team that comes to mind that could definitely follow this rule would be Virtus Pro, who we now already see going to three to five events every single year, not really caring too much about their online play. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Will the teams follow Astralis, follow their lead, and actually participate in less events due to the players not wanting to play or either having injuries due to that, like, you know, that extensive travel? It's going to be curious to see what teams are willing to travel the most and actually go to all the events and actually earn their earn their income and what teams will sit back, relax, and actually enjoy their experience and only play a limited amount of events. This could be a turning point for CSGO throughout 2018. As always, hope you guys all enjoyed the show. Huge shout out to all my patrons out there. We have Poflo alongside God Doctor and also Chris Scott. Thank you guys for supporting the show. I do appreciate that. I hope to see you guys in a couple more days with more CSGO news. Hope you guys all leave a comment down below what your favorite story was. As always, hope you all enjoy your day and I will see you all next time. Live, love, laugh, lot. My name is Jake Marmer, like you, and uh, goodbye.